And now it is my pleasure and delight to introduce Michael Blackman and I believe his wife Hillary will be around. They live uh, in the uh, southeastern edge of London in Kent. Michael's been a stamp collector for over 70 years and he became interested in umbrellas about 50 years ago when he was looking into the technology of manufacturing them as part of his work. And the rest, as they say, is history because he has a huge collection of many interesting things that we're gonna get to see. Michael is active in philately, a member of the British Thematic Association, the Royal Philatelic Society of London and many others. So without further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce Michael Blackman. My collaborator has now left the room, so away we go. Um, well, thank you very much for inviting me to give this display. Um, and before I start, I'd just like to um, uh, record um, the help and support that I received from the late Marianne Owens, um, the only other person that I know of to um, study and collect on this theme. So she was a great help. I just wanted to mention that. So um, as Dawn mentioned, um, it all started, my interest in umbrellas started because of my work. Um, I was looking at books to see what information there was on manufacturing uh, umbrellas. I didn't find much in the books uh, about that, but I did find um, an absolutely marvellous book, um, A History of, uh, of the Umbrella, uh, which covered just about everything to do with umbrellas, their culture and use and so on. Um, and uh, so about 30 years ago, um, I got going on a, uh, on a new theme and uh, I've been continuing through till now. So um, let's get going. So here's just a brief outline of the uh, stuff we'll be covering. So um, I'll start off with some everyday umbrellas and parasols, then some stuff on the history, um, their use in fashion, religion, art, entertainment, humor, um, advertising, health and insurance, manufacturers, repairers, accessories, and right, finally, a final miscellany of uh, lighter items. So um, let's crack on. So uh, here's a, a few everyday umbrellas. The first one on, on the top, the postcard, it's an undivided back. So you've got the message at the bottom, German. And I quite like it because it's got a lot of lovely colorful umbrellas uh, out in the rain. The lady below in Stampin' Laos, um, she's in um, traditional costume and another lovely umbrella. Uh, on the other, the one on the left is from a Danish um, a booklet of stamps. And uh, the gist of the message um, is sending luggage ahead of a journey saves hassle on the day of travel. Um, and the message is, uh, reinforced by the uh, very large gentleman, lots of parcels, a very dangerous looking umbrella sticking out at the back. And it's a hassle for him and it's a hassle for all the other people. So, um, moving on. Um, so, some more everyday umbrellas. This time it's um, Postman. So there's the um, United States uh, stamp 1963 with the um, postman, uh, the nice umbrella, protecting himself and um, hopefully the, the mailbag as well. Uh, and a similar uh, situation um, shows on for Singapore. Um, you'll see the, the very big difference between uh, Western umbrellas and uh, Chinese and Japanese ones, that, the type that the um, uh, Singapore postman is holding. Um, I'll elaborate on that a little bit later. And at the bottom, you've got a, a postmark that uh, is using uh, the image from the stamp. Um, and it's the Amarillo Post Office Centennial in 1987. 
Um, so here are some everyday parasols, um, very often used to promote tourism. Um, so you've got Bahamas and Bangladesh. Um, and then the base, you've got a, a slogan postmark for Prestwick in Scotland. Um, and a couple of booklet covers, um, the very well-known um, American one, because that, that stamp's been uh, used an awful lot. And then there's the, uh, the Isle of Man as well. Right, well, that, that's the easy bit. Um, now we go to the early history. Well, the earliest history of umbrellas is, is shrouded in mystery. Um, but they would have certainly um, been um, something very simple, a, lar a large wooden bowl with um, a slab of wood um, nailed to the top. Um, and they gradually developed from that. And the earliest ones I've found on stamps um, are these Sri Lankan cave paintings. Um, I don't usually like to have a stamp that um, has only got a very tiny umbrella, but um, in this case, it's uh, needs must. Um, I've enlarged them there so you can see them. They appear to be um, solid fixed umbrellas and they appear to be attached to the, um, the people. And the people are obviously important people um, and that's part of their, their symbolism. So that's um, said to be 1700 BC, which seems quite amazing, but um, below that is the, the um, uh, a Chinese stamp showing a, uh, a drum cart, which is used for measuring distance, and that has a, an umbrella structure above it to um, uh, save the mechanism. And that's 300 AD. And the, the other one is a funeral procession for the first emperor of all China, and that's 200 BC. Couple more examples of early history. Uh, the first one is the King of Assyria, um, 8th century BC. Um, he's in procession um, and he's got a large umbrella with tassels um, held above him uh, by a servant. And the one on the right is quite surprising. It's um, on a Roman floor mosaic in a sports hall in Sicily. Um, and uh, the, the images are often referred to as, not surprising me, the bikini girls. And they hold, her, her colleague there is holding a, a large flat um, solid parasol with a bit of decoration on it. Um, the reason that they're there um, is open to a lot of speculation. Um, I'll leave it at that. So umbrellas developed um, as a symbol of power. Um, and these examples are, are the King of Siam, now Thailand. Um, and they show his um, throne um, with umbrellas around. Now these are um, totally ceremonial. They're multi-tiered umbrellas, usually about seven um, um, tiers of umbrella. Um, and uh, you can also see at the bottom um, his royal barge made up of seven of these seven tiered umbrellas. Uh, a couple of other examples of, of umbrellas as a symbol of power. The, the top one is um, Indochina, um, now Vietnam, and it's the Tonkin Northern area. Um, in the middle is a senior Mandarin, and his importance again is emphasized by the two servants holding very large um, uh, elaborate umbrellas. Moving down to the, the other image, which is another postcard of the early, early 20th century. Um, this is Nigeria, and the chiefs are in procession to a meeting. And the most important um, uh, the uh, most important chief is the one with the largest umbrella, more or less in the middle there. Umbrellas are also um, uh, 
and particularly parasols, are very much um, involved in in fashion. It became quite quite the thing uh, in the late nineteenth century and early twentieth century. Um, women to have very large uh, and impressive umbrellas. Um, I'm sorry, I use the term umbrellas and parasols a little bit um, uh, uh, mixed up, um, but umbrellas is really the uh, more gen general term. Um, so here we've got uh, on the first one a postcard of uh, Queen Wilhelmina and uh, her consort Henry uh, of the Netherlands. And on the right, we've got a, uh, an image of, uh, in, in the Stage Beauties um, series of postcards. And it's Mrs. Brown Potter. She was originally from New Orleans, but she made her name in uh, London society. And she's got a, a rather nice parasol to um, go with that. Another area where umbrellas pop up is in religion. And uh, the, the item there is an 1832 uh, entire uh, Italian. And the image in the uh, <clears throat> in the corner is has got a, a, an umbrella at the top. In the Catholic Church, they call that a, a pavilion, but it's, it is just an umbrella. Um, and it's a symbol of the basilicas. Um, and here it's the community of Castel Hildardo. Uh, and also the um, cardinal in charge between, um, between um, Pope, one pope dying and the next one being appointed, the Sede Picanti period, he also uses um, uh, an image uh, with the, piece of, uh, the keys of St. Peter and um, the umbrella at the top. The card on the left um, rather surprised me when it popped up on eBay. Um, what has a saint and uh, um, a lot of people selling umbrellas got to do with each other? Um, it turns out that this is a French card and uh, the saint is Saint Medard and he has amongst other things, he's the uh, patron saint of Umbrella manufacturers and sellers. So that could be interesting. And a few more examples. Uh, the first one is a postcard of a statue of Buddha, and he's on his travels, and he's got a very large umbrella over his shoulder. In the middle, there's a nun um, of a, a Catholic mission in China in the 1920s. And she's got a nice um, uh, Chinese style parasol there. Uh, the guy on the right is a Honza, and he's a Buddhist monk of the Fo sect in China. And this is a plate from a book on the dress and manners of the Chinese, published in London in 1814. Um, Umbrellas also pop up in quite a lot of paintings. Um, that's partly linked to the fact that they were very uh, fashionable. And so the uh, artists reflected that. And we've got pictures here by uh, Goya, his Alquitazol, so that's about a parasol. Um, next one is La Lettre de Mort, but there's a very large um, umbrella there as well. Um, and then there's Les Parapuis by Renoir, uh, which is quite famous because he was using a new blue pigment and he used it here in, in, uh, to very good effect. Um, stamp isn't, isn't the best that it could be, but never mind. Um, I haven't found a better one. And the final one uh, is a little um, female of our umbrella, so again, lady with an umbrella, and that's by Boudin. A couple of other examples, quite a nice one there, the Les Amoureux sous la parasol, um, and a very, very nice orange parasol. Uh, the, one, the other one is from Hungary, and uh, it's called October, I don't know why, 
um, by Ferenczi Caroli. Um, and it's showing a tilted umbrella and artists used uh, tilted umbrellas quite a lot to um, uh, provide the right conditions for their painting out, outside. Japan, also um, plenty of um, art there. And the first one is a, um, a woman with umbrella by Kyunga. Uh, it's quite a nice uh, stamp and uh, smart. Um, and it, it illustrates the, uh, the structure of uh, a Japanese umbrella. Um, they look very fragile, but they're actually very effective. Um, so they have a lot of ribs where we just have tend to have just eight on our western umbrellas they have a lot of ribs made of wood and the canopy is um, uh, strong paper which is uh, lacquered and often decorated um, and as you can see from the image on the postcard below um, they can be quite effective even in very um very difficult um, circumstances, uh, heavy rain there. Um, this is quite amusing because the um, um, the painter is uh, Hokusai, who's famous for his um, great wave of Kanagawa. But here he's got a, a the, the uh, title is um, the name of the place, which I won't try to pronounce, in summer. Um, so he's got a sense of humor because uh, that's not typical summer. And the sort of summer we get in England quite often. Uh, there's a few more other examples. Um, so we've got snow in the top two. The one on the right um, is just titled Blizzard. So um, that's uh, making an umbrella uh, deal with quite difficult circumstances. And uh, bottom to uh, better weather. Moving on to entertainment, we start off in the Far East. Um, we've got uh, um, umbrella dances at the top. Um, on the right, we've got a Chinese one. Um, this is um, a foot juggler. Um, should be fun. And over here on the left, we have a Japanese cover, and he's twirling his parasol um, in a dance on the, on the beach. And some quite nice postmark to go with that. Um, staying on the theme of entertainment. Um, there's a pass card for the Evil Umbrella Corporation, Resident Evil, a video game from Japan. Um, and then there's a, uh, uh, a program for a play, The Parasol, which was first performed in 1988, and it's a play based on a novel by Chekhov. Singing in the Rain was a bit of fun. Um, so the stamp is from a miniature sheet uh, issued by Niger, uh, and it's the original MGM version um, with Gene Kelly. It was revived in London um, in 2012 at the Palace Theatre, um, and the, po the card on the right is a, a version of the uh, poster that went with it. And then there's a picture of the outside of the theatre to be decorated with umbrellas. And we, not surprisingly, we went to um, one, one of the, um, um, it, we went to the, uh, to see this and uh, um, it was quite authentic. The um, people in the front few rows were issued with um, disposable plastic um, coats because the enthusiasm of the guy in the rain and they got they had quite a lot of water around um, meant that they would get quite wet so it was, it was quite fun so moving on to humor 
Um, we've got um, on at the base. We've got a, a, mole, a mole ready now. Um, as as you know, uh, Roland Hill in, in um, bringing in his penny post in eighteen forty um, thought that and postal station item would be most popular. Um, and it was almost an afterthought, afterthought to provide the alternative of the penny black. Well, as it turned out, the uh, mole ready um, covers, uh, stationery, were um, very unpopular. Um, and as you can see, they, they were very, very uh, untidy, very um, complex, um, quite a mixture of things to do with um, places that were in the British then empire and um, got elephants on the left and so on. So they were very unpopular and they were regularly um, lampooned. Um, and in Victorian um, England, um, when people um, went to um, make fun of something, they really went to um, a great degree. And we've got here uh, one of these caricatures. Um, Lampooning the Mole Reddies. Um, and this is uh, uh, by William Spooner. Uh, and uh, I looked out for something like this for quite a while and then spotted this one. And it's got a fisherman up there. And of course, what does a fisherman have sitting in the outside for a long time? He has a nice umbrella. It's got a nice green umbrella. Uh, some more light ones, light hearted ones. Let a smile be your umbrella, nice and colourful. The guy at the bottom is uh, using the wind to uh, blow him along with his open umbrella on roller skates. And he's got the message, um, I have, if nothing happens, I'll blow in soon. Now this is a, a Canada card from 1905. And then the guy on the left, again undivided, so uh, very early uh, 20th century. Um, and his message is, I have an easy job, um, which is a bit fun. And we've got a child in a little chariot um, screaming and uh, um, a parasol held from above and over him. So just a bit of fun. Um, moving on to advertising, the uh, line at the top are um, advertisements from magazines for the company Fox and Co in the UK. Um, they were important because they invented in 1850 and patented um, the uh, umbrella structure that we used to now really, um, made of um, steel ribs and uh, stretchers. Um, and in fact that, that's still used as the main basis for umbrellas today. You can see how their advertising um, style moved on from time to time. Uh, in the lower line, you've got Parasol Victoria, which is a, a French advert, um, and that's for parasols that can be uh, attached to chairs. Uh, the remaining three are um, poster stamps of shops or manufacturers. Uh, Sweden, Denmark, and I quite like the silhouettes, uh, which is uh, the Netherlands. An important area where umbrellas pop up is in, in the field of health. And again, it's um, a symbol um, to emphasize the protection provided by the uh, product or the service. Um, so at the top, you've got uh, Morton iodized salt, um, helps guard against goiter. Um, and it's got the uh, little, the, their very um, characteristic trademark, a um, little girl with an umbrella holding a, um, a pot of salt, which is pouring, and the rather lovely um, uh, slogan, when it rains, pours. I've got quite a number of um, Norton salt items in just this one I popped in. In the middle row there, you've got one from New Zealand, a stamp from New Zealand, and that's just a general um, item promoting health. To the right, you've got um, 
promoting um, health for babies with injections and so on. And then uh, at the bottom of Australian meter mark and uh, parasol sunscreen. Check against the sun. And in my vein, insurance companies are very um, keen to uh, include an umbrella again um, with the message that uh, this provides you with really good protection. So we've got legal and general with an Australian meter mark and then a, a British postmark. Um, the, the stamp is uh, Chinese and it's for the Postal Simple Life Insurance. Um, and then at the bottom, we've got uh, the travelers and nationwide. And this I rather like, that's why it's um, got a whole slide to itself. Um, most trade cards, as we know, are quite simple, straightforward, uh, rectangular with um, images on the front and all the details about the product on the back. Um, this one popped up on eBay and I, I was very surprised. So it's quite nice. Uh, it's, um, it folds in the middle. So inside it's got all the detail about the um, product. Um, and on the outside you've got, um, it's an umbrella shape and then you've got their trademark, which is again an umbrella with this um, chap uh, with a hat, or a top hat. And then you've got their slogan, standard umbrellas, uh, stand all weathers. So um, I've never seen one before or since that's at all like that. So uh, I was pleased to get that. Manufacturers, pictorial covers. Um, here's three um, from the United States. Um, the first one is John Lowe and Company, 1909, and that's Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, then we've got uh, Detroit. Um, Detroit Umbrella Company, that's 1894, sent to New York City. And I quite like the, the uh, other one in the right hand corner, um, which is uh, SS Fre SS Fretz Company, Philadelphia. And they claim it's the largest umbrella factory in the world. And if you look at the image, um, they could well be right. Um, it seems pretty massive. Um, some more pictorial covers. Um, top one is uh, one from Burma, um, and it's for um, duck brand umbrellas and soaps. An unusual combination, but there we go. So I quite like that. Um, that's 1929. Then there's a German cover, Dr. Schmidt and Co. Uh, Cole in Germany, and uh, their their trademark is included in the meter mark, and also uh, on the um, on the, on the side of the cover. Uh, and then there's the oldest one that I found, which is 1876. And it's quite nice because it's Hertzep, Hertzberg Brothers, and it refers to the Philadelphia Centennial Exhibition in 1876. And also refers to their patent. And since my Early life was very much patents. Um, I've put in the uh, an extract from the patent. Um, it's not very exciting, but it's um, all about joining the um, the stretchers of the umbrella to the uh, uh, the runner on the stick. So here are some um, manufacturers' invoices. Uh, on the right, it's 18, uh, no, 17, 1798, um, Edinburgh, uh, and uh, a particularly florid um, form of uh, wording, quite nice, pretty in the typical of the time. One below is uh, just the header of a, a, a London um, UK company, and then Ives, Willett and Company, um, a, a nice, rather nice header again. US one. Um, yes, the New York. And that's 
here's a more conventional trade card, very attractive, quite large. Um, it's a Smith Manufacturing Company located East 125th Street, New York. And their slogan, Smith's Umbrellas and, uh, umbrellas and Canes, the cheapest and best. And this is around about 1900. They're also offering to uh, repair and recover umbrellas from 10 cents upwards. Sounds pretty good. Um, high quality umbrellas are $1.95, um, which in modern terms will probably be about $60. So expensive then and expensive now. And they also mentioned extra fine silk umbrellas at 1890 prices of up to $50. So about $1,500 today. So uh, that would be quite a quite, quite an expensive pair of silk. Um, manufacturers uh, of umbrellas can also be um, small home crafted uh, organizations, and many were in the early days. Um, at the top, we've got an umbrella maker located in Hanoi, um, French uh, Indo Indochina at the time, now uh, Vietnam. Um, the two small boys at the front um, look um, decidedly un less than inspired, and we told you sit there. Um, the one below is uh, from Burma, uh, Myanmar, uh, rather more informal for him, I think would be fair to say. Um, some more handcrafting, um, Thailand, China and Ethiopia, and a nice uh, Liebig um, trade card. They're always uh, very attractive, I like to include those, um, and that's Japanese. And a few perfins. Um, I try to include perfins in um, each of the uh, themes that I have pursued over the years. Um, they, uh, I'm sure you'll know they're quite a challenge to track down. Um, so, so these are manufacturers in London and Glasgow who seem to be the uh, most the, the main areas in, in the UK. Um, Here's a few accessories um, to umbrellas. Uh, the first one's quite nice. It's um, an image of a frog, and it's by um, uh, Fabergé, um, the jeweler. Uh, and, uh, it was quite common for people to have separate handles. And the idea was often that you could match the handle to your particular parasol you wanted, and that would all work with whatever costume you were wearing at the time. So quite a nice idea there. On the right, there's a, um, a finial. Now, top of the umbrella, the, the, stand, the standard thing is a barrel, um, but here they've replaced it with this rather um, nice item. Um, it's from Ghana, and it's a, a shanty symbol of a bird and a snake. Uh, the snake um, succeeding by stealth rather than the large bird, I think is the uh, idea. And on the left, there's a 1950s, uh, a postcard of 1950s uh, umbrella stands. Got a couple of those in our house, not surprisingly. Um, so repairing and recovering. Now, these days, we don't think of repairing or re recovering um, an umbrella, really unless it's very expensive, I suppose. But um, back in the uh, earlier part of the uh, 20th century, um, they were very, umbrellas were very solid, very strong, um, but also um, very relatively expensive. So people got them uh, cut, recovered. I quite like this because it's um, a shop in, in near, 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 near here in London. Um, it's umbrella, Hospital, which I think is quite quite nice, for repairing and recovering and so on. Um, below that is another Liebig uh, card uh, showing uh, a travelling umbrella repairer, um, and on the left it's uh, um, an 
an organization in Lyon in France. Um, they're repairing umbrellas and also shoes. Um, exhibitions uh, with some large umbrellas. And one at the top is from the Paris Exposition of 1900. The Swedish pavilion had a, a, a very large umbrella. Um, its height was 100 meters, about 330 feet, and its diameter was 140 meters, more or less 460 feet. So that comes in as quite a quite a big umbrella. Also, there were some very large umbrellas um, in an um, in an art installation um, by the artists Christo and Jean Claude, which they set up 3,100 large steel uh, fixed umbrellas with a height of each having a height of 20 feet and diameter of 28 feet. Um, so there were a set of yellow ones in in California and a set of blue ones in Japan. Um, so it was an art installation, um, a very expensive art installation, installation, and it was very popular in 1990 as a tourist attraction. Um, but it's all quickly removed um, when one fell and killed a visitor. A rather sad end. There's only one umbrella museum that I'm aware of that uh, is fully comprehensive in all aspects of umbrellas, um, and it's in a small village, Genesi, um, in North Italy, uh, which was a centre for handcrafted umbrellas in the area, and somebody uh, had the uh, forethought, forethought to um, create a, a museum to uh, um, commemorate that uh, that, that work. Um, and so they established way back in 1939, and in 1975 it moved, moved to a new purpose built um, building with, um, as you can see there, an, an umbrella roof. So that's quite nice. um, they produced some poster stamps in the 1950s, which I'm showing now. Okay, last lap, final miscellany. Um, the first one is uh, a parasol monitor. Um, the early planes, as you know, were, were biplanes. And when they first started to produce uh, monoplanes, uh, there was this parasol um, structure included and included in the name. Um, so as you can see, there's a, a sort of like a parasol type of structure above and below the uh, wing. I'm not sure whether it was there actually to provide real support or perhaps just to uh, reassure the uh, poor un unfortunates who were um, piloting it. Um, so there's a, there's a postcard on the left, um, um, a post British postmark, um, a stamp from Union Island, Union Island, which I think is in the uh, Caribbean. And on the right, a large postcard featuring the um, character um, Tintin, which was created in 1929 by George Rennie. Um, and he's admiring the parasol monoplane, and he's got a nice um, attractive parasol himself. And his little dog down the bottom, Snowy's got a little umbrella too, so that's nice. Um, now this is uh, money. Um, and the top two images are not to get. Um, during World War One, Australia and Germany um, ran out of metal for um, low value coins um, because they were always being used for the, the uh, war effort. So some local um, small paper um, notes were produced um, with, with limited um, uh, time scale um, for, for, to replace the, the coins that were no longer available. And a couple of them had umbrellas, so that's why they're there. And uh, quite a nice uh, banknote below, uh, Spanish, home potatoes, um, and a classic view of um, a lady with a, a parasol hat. Um, and uh, 
an open book. Shouldn't I reading it? But it's open, and that's uh, the sort of pose that was often often painted. Anthropomorphism, I'm animal investors. So the first one, I, I think it's quite fun. Bear and forbear, which means um, put up with things and don't make a fuss about it. Um, and it looks pretty much that the mother bear is doing exactly that. Um, and the pun is also that she's got four baby bears. But she has got a large green umbrella, so that cheers her up and it matches her and um, the bow on her hat. So that's not too bad. On the right, um, there was an artist who um, took famous paintings um, and put a feline uh, anger on them. And this is um, Renoir's poetry that we were looking at earlier. Right, some statistics, don't be frightened. Um, the first one is the largest and most expensive um, umbrella, which was President Reagan's planned 1983 umbrella shield in space to cover and defend the whole country at a cost of, um, estimated cost of $80 billion. Um, this is a contemporary magazine cartoon. So that counts as pretty much the largest and most expensive umbrella. And below is the umbrella that's been going longest, and that's the umbrella jellyfish, um, which has been virtually unchanged in 500 million years. Um, it's on a GB booklet and the Spanish colony of um, Ichne. So here we've got a number of uh, uh, Using little items. So on the left, the uh, it's a German card. Um, the dog is very happy under a large umbrella, um, which appears to have been provided by the owner, who's um, getting fairly wet and miserable behind him. The one in the middle, it was um, people had fun uh, cutting up uh, very common stamps. And putting the fragments together to make new images. And uh, so with this one, I quite nice because it's of course got an umbrella. And on the right, um, we've got the lad uh, going out using an umbrella as a parachute. He says it worked on, on it worked okay off his dad's barn. Um, well, this is probably the last um, last image of this guy on, on this earth, I guess. Uh, what is interesting is that um, uh, umbrellas were, um, parachutes were developed from umbrellas and um, by people jumping off um, increasingly high buildings with adapted umbrellas. That's one for Barry, Barry Stack. And finally, um, a little light humour. There's a guy, William Heath Robinson, in Britain, who was a cartoonist, and he specialised in um, creating complicated machineries um, for doing simple tasks, sometimes um, tasks that didn't need any doing. And it was all just a bit of bit of fun. And a couple of them have got umbrellas, so I thought that was a, a good thing to finish with. The first one is actually relatively simple. Um, so the umbrellas are going round on a conveyor belt. The little window, the old gentleman's sitting there. If he sees his umbrella, he pulls and the bell rings. Um, and you've got a picture of the, the satisfied lady who, who preceded him going out with her the parasol that she's retrieved. Um, one on the right um, is starts at the top left. The guys are walking in. You'll note they've got um, a candle on their head already. They come out um, to the top right and they picked up um, an umbrella to be tested to see whether it's waterproof. You come down to the uh, bottom right uh, and the candles are lit. They then go into the test area, pull the um, cord, water comes down. They then come out to the bottom left 
um, and the guy is pointing at the uh, at the candle, which is still lit, so that that umbrella has passed the test. Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed it, um, and thank you for um, staying with me. Thank you, Michael. That was great. Uh, I, I I said this before to you. I, I love the all the different kinds of material that you have uh, in the presentation, and uh, definitely gonna have a, a better appreciation the next time I open up my umbrella here. <laughs> <laughs>